Despite what the media wants you to believe, there actually is a large group of people that actually want to go to a physical store to go shopping this holiday season. So if you are a brick and mortar store, then this holiday season is for you. Today, I want to talk about how you can step up the game so that you can make your customer experience so amazing when they walk in your door. So today, I just wanted to give you a few simple tips on how you can hide, you can um, um, make your store present itself so well that you are touching all of the senses of your customer. So the first one I want you to think about is I want you to think about the sites, okay? We all are visual people. Think about it when you go to a website or when you go to a building and there's trash everywhere, okay? You instantly kind of feel icky and you don't want to do anything with it. If you go to a website, it's clunky, it's old, it takes forever for pages to load chances are you're gonna leave. So the same goes with your store. I want you to make yourself aware of what your store actually looks like. Like we're talking, what does it look like when people drive up and park in your parking lot? Does it look like it's clean? Do you have trash all over the place? Okay, if you constantly have trash, all over the place. Maybe you can, or right outside your front door, maybe you should have a trash can or something out there just so that way there's another, oppor another opportunity for people to throw trash away. Not saying that trash is the, you know, that's the, that's a big thing because I mean, that always happens, right? The wind. But when it comes to being a visual representation for people that are coming to your store, even if it's even if it's for the regulars, but for the first time people as well, you want your exterior to actually be a good representation of yourself. So um, I think about there's a, there's a restaurant actually locally um, that we have not stopped by to visit because we thought it was closed because the paint has been chipping and it's horrible. But we found out they are open, but they, they either don't have the money or they can't fix it. And so that is just, yeah, it's a superficial thing, but when it comes to site, I want to make sure that you at least have a good representation of what your store looks like on the outside. Now, when we walk on the inside, I want you to uh, make sure you don't have a ton of clutter all over the place, that, that you have things organized nicely. I have been to... Um, a couple boutiques in the last couple weeks. And um, one of them, they actually had so much product crammed into a basement. But yet, while it looked like there was a lot of product, it did not look cluttered at all. It was organized nice and neatly. So I was still able to see all of the different products and they had a lot, but it still looked really well how they had displayed everything. And so that was really helpful. And then I wanna make sure too, don't have a lot of boxes just laying around. If you can slide those guys under a table, that is super helpful. The last thing you want your customers to do when they're walking in your store is to walk around a box, to trip over something. You want to make sure it's as easy as possible. Another thing I want you to think about is display. If you have a physical product, like let's talk about clothes for a second. If you can actually have like a mannequin or a bust or something like that and actually display your products, maybe it's a, maybe it's a shirt with a with a jacket and a pair of earrings or something. I want you to think from your customer standpoint. If you sell women's clothes, chances are you're probably going to have their friends come in and buy clothes for them. But what about their spouses or their significant other? There's a bunch of men out there, guys, that don't know what earrings go with what shirt or what jacket goes with those earrings. Okay, so if you have those displayed, that's going to make a huge difference for the people that are going to shop for their loved ones this season. So figure out a way on, on how you can display any type of product that you have to offer in your store. It's just really, really nice. And then the final thing I want you to think about when it comes to the site sense is I wanna make sure that you are greeting your customers with smiling faces, okay? And that goes across all of your employees. So if you can give your all your employees a pep talk, when your customers come in, the last thing they should see is a grouchy face. I can tell you from experience that when I have walked into any store and I just am greeted with a grouchy person that clearly had a bad day and just can't quite seem to get out of the rough of it, um, it really makes my experience kind of crummy and I'm coming in and maybe I'm excited or maybe I've had a hard day. The last thing I want to see is somebody else having a hard day. So it's time to put that game face on for all of your employees, for your customers when they walk in the door, just because you want to represent yourself well visually. Okay. Let's talk about another sense. I want to talk about sounds for a second. Okay. I, um, I worked in an environment where it's always quiet. And so you can hear 
everybody's conversations. It sounds like crickets sometimes. And I will tell you, even if you just have a little bit of music, especially Christmas music this holiday season, just playing lightly in the background, that will absorb a lot of the chitter chatter that goes on inside your store. So when you, um, and I, it doesn't have to be fancy. You don't have to have a fancy system. You can have one of those. We have a little Bluetooth um, speaker um, that we have at our house and that we've used um, at, um, at the company that I work for. We've played that and nobody can even tell you know, and, and you can, it's cute that you can display it. You can get those cheap on Amazon and you just hook it up to your phone and you can play Pandora or Spotify or whatever you want to do. But having some sort of sound that comes out when people are walking in the door just avoids that awkward silence that people have. And, you know, we all have those employees that don't like to keep things. Um, they don't like the awkward silence. So then they talk and then they say silly things. So if you have some sort of sound that can greet the customers when they walk in the door, or something cheery, something festive, especially this holiday season is super helpful. It's not, it's nothing crazy. All of these suggestions that I give you are not a whole lot of, of money. Most of them are free. So if you can figure out a way to tune into the senses of your customers when they walk in, when it comes to sound, that's just an idea. Okay. Another thing is, is let's avoid, um, I kind of, I got ragged on the employees in the last one when it comes to sight, but sounds, if you have cust, if you have employees that are chatting about their weekend or chatting about an argument that they had with their family members over the Thanksgiving holiday, because um, I just heard this. Okay, so see if you can have your employees avoid the chatter of personal lives in front of your customers. I know sometimes my, most people don't understand that, um, but it really is distracting, especially with somebody who's coming in that really wants to have a nice shopping experience, and then they end up getting sucked into the drama of the other person's life, or they overhear things. You know, we want to protect um, employees and their privacy, and we want to protect customers and their privacy. So no one should be talking um, and having personal conversations in front of customers. Okay, not to say you can't do that in the back room, um, but that's just something that I don't think a lot of small business owners think about because we're so involved in the day-to-day -day business that we don't think about stuff like that. So I want you to consider that as well. Okay, let's talk about scents for a little bit. Okay, scents can be really funky because I know um, there's there's a lot of different scents that you can throw out there. Um, um, I actually have an aunt that is allergic to scents. And so she like specifically will um, tell us not to wear um, perfumes when we get together with family reunions, okay? So when I'm talking about scents, I want you to be considerate of that and not have anything overpowering. So I'm not talking like go through and Febreze your whole store before people walk in the door. I'm not talking about that. Even if you have a simple candle that has a mild scent on it, probably just maybe one in, in your store that might throw off a little bit of a scent, um, especially like a cookie or a festive, a festive option for you. That's always helpful as well. Another choice, another option that I actually, um, a gal told me about years ago is she she would bake cookies for a customer and would make the actual dough and she would give the dough to her customers and they had a toaster oven in the back and I don't know the baking instructions or whatever, but they would make cookies inside their toaster oven in the break room. So when their customers walked in the door, not only were they greeted with the smell of cookies, like real cookies baking in the oven, that's not an artificial scent, but they actually had them for the other taste or the other scent, which is taste. So they actually would pull those cookies out and they would put them on a tray and they would serve them to their customers. Okay. So we talked about uh, sights, we talked about sounds, we talked about scents, and I want you to talk about like a taste function. Yeah, you know, um, not everybody wants to talk about taste or have taste in their stores or whatever, but honestly, it really is kind of a nice thing. Think about all the people that are running around doing all the shopping and stuff. There's a lot of people that might not have had, to, had a chance to stop and maybe they're dehydrated. So if you have a bottle of water just that you can offer your customers when they walk in, that's a nice gesture. If you do something like the cookie thing, um, like you could literally go to a Pillsbury, grab a Pillsbury thing out of the out of the grocery store and pop those in your toaster oven in the break room. I don't 
really know. That's just a suggestion. But when you can give something of sustenance to your customers, it really does help them when they're shopping and they're out and about. They might be tired. That might be the boost that they need to, to help them want to finish the shopping. And it might create a positive experience for them as well. I actually just talked to a gal the, um, at a store I was at recently, and she came in and she was asking the employees about, hey, don't you have any chocolate around here? I could really use some chocolate right now, especially now that the holidays are here. So even if it's just something like a Hershey's kiss in a jar at the checkout counter, something simple like that, it might be just the boost that your customers need to help them finish up their shopping and create a great positive experience for them. So those are the tips that I have for you that can help make your customer experience amazing at your location. All of these are something that you can actually do that makes you stand out against the competition. You don't get that at like a Walmart or a Lowe's or a Target. They can only get that and experience these types of things at your store. So tell me what you're going to do. Post it in the comments and tell me which one sounds great that you can incorporate into your business and, and tell me about it. I would love to hear about it. So, <laughs> excuse me. I hope that helps and I will see you next time. Have a great holiday season.